As many of you guys know, especially those who have checked out my setup tour videos for gaming in the past, I tend to play most of my games, primarily for the purpose of recording them for YouTube, on a TV rather than a monitor. And depending on the kind of gamer you are, that's probably the case for you too. Now, some people do prefer a monitor, generally for the more pure gaming experience. Maybe you've got a PC and a PlayStation, maybe an Xbox as well set up. But for many of us, especially if you're maybe in a family, you might use a TV setup instead. Now, I typically go for the latter. As I said, I have a TV, it's around a 22 inch, which is decent enough for me. I like that kind of size TV. Smaller, crisper, simpler, as far as space goes for sure. Plus, I needed an older one to record older games with my Opage setup for stuff like PS2 titles, PS1, PS3, the old school Xbox, that kind of stuff. Composite cables, component cables, all that kind of thing that you would expect from a TV. Now, the difference here is this monitor, the EX3203R, which is quite the mouthful, I just call it the 1800R for short, is a very interesting alternative, let's say, to what I typically use, because a company called BenQ very kindly reached out to me, specifically because of the kind of content that I do, being very heavily involved in the racing scene here on YouTube, the racing game scene in particular, because this monitor, it's not a TV, it is a monitor, is specifically designed with racing gamers in mind. And that's not necessarily something you can say about a lot of TVs or monitors, certainly not TVs. So for the purpose of this review, to give you some idea of what this monitor can do for those who have the requirements and the needs and the want for something like this, What's it capable of? Well, we're going to go through two different lines of tech, in effect. One which is the rough overview for those of us who maybe aren't extremely tech savvy, but you know certain keywords, certain things that you're looking for from your monitor. And then the more in-depth side for those who already perhaps have a monitor and are looking to upgrade to something more specifically purposed. And chances are, if you're here on the channel, most of you probably are already racing gamers, be it Gran Turismo, Forza, whatever the case may be. So with that in mind, the overall specs of this monitor, the 1800R, let's call it, because that is part of its name, it's a 31 and a half inch screen, which these days doesn't sound particularly large, but trust me, when you see it in person, it's more than adequate. It's a great size monitor, certainly when you consider that unlike a TV, this isn't designed for a whole family to sit around and look at. It's designed just for you, maybe for a friend, to get the immersive experience of a racing game. And with that in mind, I would say that 32 inches, or close enough, is more than enough. It's a massive screen in comparison to what I would typically use. It gives you a great picture size. You can get a great eye for the detail in the game, regardless of what you're playing, be it something that's slightly older, say from a PS3 era, or even something as new as Forza Horizon 4, as an example, or Gran Turismo Sport. Now, as far as the rest of the tech, the resolution on the monitor is 2560 by 1440 so it can play newer games just fine. As far as the refresh rate, it's 144 Hz, so smooth, crisp, and clear, which is kind of important, let's say, in racing games arguably more so than you could say most game types, because with most games you can get away with some choppy gameplay. It's not ideal, of course, but with a racing game, you notice it much more quickly, because it needs to be as smooth as possible. Again, that's what this is designed for. And the reason why I refer to this one as the 1800R is because that's actually the curvature of the screen, because as you can see again from the footage of the monitor itself, as well as being, I think, a fantastic looking thing even when it's turned off, it has an 1800R angle of curve. And basically what that means is it strikes the balance based on market research and testing between being curved enough to be immersive but not so curved that it makes it awkward. For instance, as I said, if you are in a two-player game or if you maybe want to sit not directly in front of the screen, it's not so ridiculously angled that it immediately looks weird. And as far as the tech side of things, physically speaking, in terms of connectivity, control, wall mounting even, well, first of all, for the wall mounting, I opted for the regular version, 
it's freestanding, but you can get a wall mounting kit as well if you want to. And for me, that's not entirely necessary because I do have the surface area, but it's nice to know that you have that option because it looks pretty cool to have it wall mounted, especially one of this size. And for many people, that is a more efficient option, especially if you don't want to have a freestanding console underneath the monitor or would rather have maybe a keyboard underneath instead so you can be a little bit closer to the screen or just make it look more streamlined. But as far as those physical connections that I was referring to just now, such as the buttons and the plug sockets, it has two HDMI ports, it's USB-C connective, and it has built-in controls. They're hidden underneath the screen itself, Probably you can see some in the footage that I'll record for the video itself. And what that means is you've got all the control for the menu, which again, you'll see more in depth in a second, but it means that you don't need a remote. So again, a little bit better than the TV, I would say. Streamlined, more efficient, you don't need new batteries for said remote like you would with the TV. And although those are small things, if they're things that you can get rid of, then why not? It makes the process so much more efficient. And chances are, unlike a TV, once again, if you are using something like this, you're going to be sitting far closer to it than you would with a TV. So again, you don't need a controller, a remote, you can just do it straight from the screen monitor itself. Now, I mentioned earlier on in the video, of course, that I wanted to discuss some more overview type specs, as we just did, but also get into some of the clever tech inside as well, not just fancy numbers like the refresh rate or the screen size or the weight. Those are all cool, but pretty much any monitor will give you those kind of numbers. What makes this one more suitable for racing games than many, especially if you're comparing it to a TV, is the following stuff stuff such as the dynamic range. Now, the HDR in this monitor, HDR10 in particular, is something which sounds cool on paper. You can throw out a lot of acronyms, and numbers, etc. specs to impress people, but what that actually means in action is what's more important. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is that if you have a particular scene in the game with, for instance, glaring sunlight, but then very dark shadows, which you need to see details in, which will happen a lot, more than you might even realize. It adjusts the active range of the screen to mean that the light isn't quite as piercing, even though you can still tell how bright it's intending to be, and simultaneously making the details in the shadows clearer and crisper. So it essentially elevates the shadows, reduces the glare, but still gives you the actual realism of both, if that makes sense. And when you see it in action, it's initially a small thing, but once you notice it, it actually makes a big difference. And another thing that makes a big difference, one which I think is probably pretty easy to miss unless you're looking for it, is something that they have fitted called AMD FreeSync 2. And essentially what that does, which is also extremely important for racing games, as I alluded to earlier on, is that alongside that 144Hz refresh rate, it means that the image tearing is essentially not a problem at all. Rarely, if ever, will that happen. Now, that also means that you don't have the choppy frame rate, which people will often complain about from a game. Now, of course, there's a difference between playing it yourself on the monitor and then trying to, for instance, capture some footage and upload it to YouTube, because that's out of the monitor's hands. So when you're actually playing it yourself, you don't want choppy gameplay. <laughs> it goes without saying, and that's the whole point. That's what the FreeSync is about, and it does a pretty good job of it, to say the least. And last but definitely not least is one of the things that BenQ are understandably the most proud of, which is called BI+, Brightness Intelligence Plus Technology. And this is part of what they call the Eye Care Package. Now, this is something which some younger players may roll their eyes at. Eye care, yeah, don't sit too close to the monitor, take regular breaks. That's true, that's all true, but at the end of the day, even then you still need to actively try and change the way monitors work and the way images look if you're going to combat that problem more so. Because most of us are not going to take a break or sit further away from the monitor. So what BenQ have done is they've gone the extra mile for you instead of that, so that instead of stepping away from the monitor or sitting 30 feet back from it to get the ideal brightness, they actually have this BI Plus technology which detects the ambient lighting in the room and then adjusts it accordingly. 
And it adjusts stuff like keeping it flicker free, the low blue light settings, which help a lot. The technology that's built into and built around this Brightness Intelligence Plus package means that you never have to, for instance, have glare in your face like you would with a TV or a regular monitor, but at the same time tying into the HDR tech from earlier, it means that it's not as glaring, but you can still see the details. Whereas with something like a traditional TV, what would you have to do? You'd have to maybe turn up the sharpness, turn up the contrast, perhaps lower the brightness. Whereas this does all of that for you, but it does it more efficiently than you could setting it up yourself. It does the thinking for you, it adjusts so that without you having to think about it, it's actually better for your health, ironically, as well as looking better, being clearer, crisper, better details, better lighting. And you can understand why BenQ would be proud of something like that. It's pretty cool tech. So as far as my final thoughts go when it comes to the 1800R, I think that I have two final verdicts in effect. I can speak from the point of view of my situation, and I can speak from the point of view as a racing gamer. And the difference between those two is significant, because most people who enjoy racing games don't necessarily have the same requirements that I do as a content producer, and that's the crucial difference. Because in order for me to, for instance, capture gameplay for YouTube, which most people don't when they play a game, I need certain things from my TV, and that's actually one of the reasons why I went for a monitor, which, or a TV I should say, that doesn't seem as impressive. This slightly more basic HD 22 inch, because it has the multiple HDMI, composite, component cables, etc., which a monitor doesn't have because it's quite simply not a TV. So from that point of view, this is the kind of thing that I wouldn't have purchased because of that very reason, because simply my needs are different. So that's the one verdict, but for the majority of people watching this video, that's not going to be the case for you. You are, chances are, a gaming enthusiast, you like racing games most likely, and that side of things is an easy yes. Of course I can recommend it. It looks fantastic, it's a good weight, a good size, the curve is, I would say, a perfect angle, and all of the tech that's put into it, both the obvious apparent stuff, but also the behind the scenes stuff, they put a lot of thought into it, and as far as pricing goes, it's not even ridiculous either. Of course, prices will vary depending on where you get it, but I think for what it is, what it does, and what's packed into it, it's a pretty good deal. So as far as gamers in general, if you are looking to build a very impressive setup that looks classy, it's efficient in terms of space, as I said, you can even mount it to the wall and gives you all the tech that you'd want for an Xbox or a PC or a PlayStation, all of which of course can connect to it easily, then yeah, I can definitely recommend it. And I want to thank BenQ once again for providing me with the EX3203R, or as I nickname it, the 1800R, to do this review. It's a very cool piece of kit, and yeah, I can definitely recommend it. But that's it overall for this review. Of course, stick around on the channel for more in the future, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.